I updated to iPadOS 18.1 for the developer beta. The public beta for iPadOS 18 is also available now. I'm not sure how long that's been around. Are any of you guys trying it out? I was looking for some information on Apple intelligence, but it's disappeared now. Basically, it was saying that the feature is not available if you are in Europe or China. It also doesn't work with UK English. So yeah, those are the limitations at the moment. And with that out of the way, let's turn on the feature and see what we have. Fantastic human. Hello, it's Ropsy with Paperless X. To master the use of the apps that we cover on this channel, make sure you head over to our second YouTube channel, Paperless Humans, for both free and paid courses. You can also access them on our website via Patreon. And we even have them on Udemy, if you prefer that. We will have a link to all of that in the description down below. I really hate how we have to manually turn off Siri for each app in iPadOS 18. This is a huge inconvenience for those of us who care about our privacy and would by default just want to have these options turn off. Apple should turn these off by default or at least give us an option to turn everything off with one button or one icon. And then, you know, ideally, you'll then be asked for permission each time you want to use the feature. I think that's a better setup. I have so many apps and doing this for each app and even new apps that I'm downloading is going to be a massive pain. Definitely not the kind of privacy we were expecting to have where we have to turn it off for every app manually. My first stop was Apple Notes, naturally. So let's see what we can do in the app now. Proofreading automatically corrects your writing, which is brilliant despite my first initial skepticism. It's great for both simple and technical writing. Technical writing was my biggest worry when I first tried it out because I haven't had the best experience with proofreading tools these past few years. They don't really do well with technical writing, which always poses a problem in our work. Proofreading in iPadOS 18 is the reverse of what we're used to, but it pretty much works the same. Only this time, you get to go through each correction that the tool has already implemented. This is much faster because you'll quickly go through to make sure that there aren't any errors or changes you want to undo. It works really well because the feature is quite accurate and we're still only on the beta version. Two minutes into trying this, I was really convinced that this can actually replace my Grammarly. I really wanted to try and make sure that it can. And to do that, I had to test it on technical writing. So I had to go copy one of our user guides on the website. They don't really follow your typical grammar rules because of the amount of technical terms that we use. I was happy to notice that the tool works in Safari. So that's exciting. Definitely not going to be needing the Grammarly extension anymore. I just wish the writing tools were available on the main toolbar. It will be easier to access them from there. The tool made five changes, which is promising because Grammarly would have picked a million errors with this. This definitely is the best technical writing proofreading tool I have encountered so far. So before I continued exploring this tool, I made sure I canceled my Grammarly subscription. Grammarly doesn't offer refunds, but um, well, you know, there's always a workaround and I thought I'll just give it a try to see if I'll get a refund. And as usual, they've made it very difficult to do that. Um, it's not something you easily find. You actually have to look for it and maybe know where to look for it. And surprisingly, they were quick to respond, like lightning fast, which I wasn't expecting because I just took a break for brunch. And when I came back, they'd already responded and issued the refund. Best customer service I have received in a while. I was happy I got to save some money, but I was also sad that they were actually quite lovely. They've probably been monitoring my account somehow because this is the sixth time 
in 30 days that I've canceled Grammarly, but that's a story for another video. It's just been a long time coming, so I am done with Grammarly, hopefully. The results I got were very impressive for a beta tool. It's definitely going to change how we work on our devices, but I became curious to check if this tool works offline. Apple did say it's on device, right? So I went to check the settings and there are no settings for that. I will have to check offline for more extensive evaluation a bit later on. You can share feedback to help train the generative models. You guys know how I feel about generative AI. Not a fan, not a fan of training it at all. Rewriting would be more useful if we could compare the new text to the old one. The app kept the format, and at a glance, the format and structure of the writing is still the same. So I really like that. You can use three different tones. You can make it friendly, professional, or you can make it concise. The setup we have for the summary is what I was expecting for the grammar where we get a preview of the suggested changes and we decide whether or not we want to use them. But that probably takes more time for you to go through your writing, but it also makes sure that there are not a lot of errors. The summary can either be a simple paragraph or a bulleted one. You can choose to replace everything in your notes or just copy and paste it to add it any way you like. Apple Notes can also convert your notes to lists or tables. I was unable to convert it to a table. I really wanted to see how they would do that. I was really curious to see, but I guess we have to wait a little bit longer. Transcription is working and is very accurate and super fast, in real time almost. I hope you guys are starting to understand and appreciate why I moved to Apple Notes. It's simply fantastic with all the features that they're bringing in. It's really awesome. You can add the transcript to your notes. Not sure what happened there, but let's try again. Not what I'm expecting, so perhaps I should just copy and paste it instead. This could just be an error because that's not what it's supposed to be displaying. We're still in beta, so there's going to be a lot of issues. It could use some simple punctuation, like full stops and commas. Really didn't have any of those. Other than that, this can actually work, and of course, once it's been polished, you can even search the transcription. If that is not brilliant, I don't know what is. So far, what do you guys like more? The grammar checker or transcription? Do tell. I was curious to see how Genmoji would improve my terrible drawings, but seems we still have to wait a little while for that. There's still a lot of missing features from Apple Intelligence, but maybe some of them I just have decided not to test them. Um, that's because these are the only tools for me that are useful, I would say, from Apple Intelligence as far as I can tell. I'm going to spend a couple of days turning off Siri for all my apps because I've decided I'm not going to be trying that on the iPad. Maybe on the phone and Mac. And I'll probably understand really how to use this without having to test it myself. My dad is a huge fan of Siri. He uses Siri for everything. So maybe I'll just ask him for his experiences and evaluate from that. Who knows? The next thing I wanted to test is whether or not these tools work offline. So I went and turned off my Wi-Fi and I was happy to see that it actually does work offline. That is just great news because it is definitely better than the setup I had in Grammarly and Quillbot. Those tools work online and I never liked them for that. And I was really upset that we didn't have any alternatives. Apple has really solved this issue for me and I couldn't be happier. I noticed that when proofreading, we can't use the keyboard though, which is quite limiting. But then again, this is not the final feature. I'm thinking and hoping that we will be able to use our keyboards without eliminating the changes that the AI would have made for you. I would also love to see better tracking for the changes we've made.
What are you excited to try out with Apple Intelligence? Since I have discontinued my Grammarly subscription, I had to update my Mac OS because I need proofreading for work. Maybe I should have kept that a little while longer. Um, so basically for things I already know how to do, I'm not sure how much faster AI would be doing those things for me. Even for things that I can learn, I would rather do those myself because AI feels like asking a child to do something for you. So I think it's really going to be a while before AI can actually do things for us without us having to check. We're a little bit far away from the perfection I would want from AI to use it for things I can already do. What are your thoughts on that? Do let me know. We hope you guys liked this video and that you found it useful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you, fantastic human, for watching. See you in the next video.